Chapter 135. The fourth ambulance to arrive on the scene at Mike's house was from Ellington. Stafford and Tolland were already there. The EMT is helping Larry Singleton field dress the wounded. Robert was the only injured party to regain consciousness so far, but Shooter ordered him taken to the hospital with the others. There had to be something wrong with him. A head injury, maybe a concussion. Robert convinced Shooter of this when he stumbled over to where he was interrogating the boys. He fell into the detective's arms and said, Believe them. It's true. <clears throat> Shooter held him up and called, EMT, get this man on a stretcher. He thought, oh, the walking dead, right. Shooter couldn't believe they attempted to insult his intelligence like that. The boys were handcuffed and locked in the back of his car. The redhead with the broken wrist wailed and kicked, but he got no mercy. The unconscious one, the millionaire's son, was in the first ambulance. He was in bad shape, so Shooter let him go for the moment. There would be a complaint filed against him over the hot-tempered redhead, but Shooter didn't care. They were prime suspects in a multiple murder case, especially with some of the weapons in their possession. Shooter wasn't taking any chances. Hand grenades? Shooter angrily thought. Kids today can get their hands on anything. They were involved, and that was good enough for him. If they were even remotely capable of the carnage he witnessed, they were a danger to public safety. A barrage of shots rang out. The officers on the scene drew their weapons and sought cover next to the cars. The shooter waited, straining his ears to hear over the storm. It came again, automatic weapon fire. He pinpointed the direction. Ricky said the street was named Bog Dancer Drive. Shooter was a weapons expert. If those shots weren't coming from an M4A1 carbine assault rifle, he would eat his Beretta. He opened his car door and ordered McMahon and Ricky to follow him. He glanced at the boys in the back seat, cursed, and slammed the car into gear. Stay down, Shooter barked, pointing at them in the mirror. What's going on? Matt asked, straining to adjust his handcuffed arms. Gunshots, Ricardo replied, trying to scrunch lower in the seat. It's Jack, he added, recognizing the sound. He glanced over at Derek, who winced in pain and sobbed. He asked, are you okay? No, Derek hollered, his face contorting. His wrist felt like it was on fire. See if I ever tell the truth again. Shut up back there, Shooter ordered, turning right on to Bog Dancer Drive. Drop dead, Ricardo cried. Let us out of this car before you get us killed. No chance, Shooter snapped, looking in the rearview mirror. You're the only suspects I've got. You don't expect me to believe your bullshit story about... Look out, Matt cried. Shooter slammed down his brakes. The car slid sideways. Derek screamed as the other boys fell against him. The car stopped. They scrambled to get off him. The patrolmen following put their vehicles nose to nose, blocking the road. They turned on their spotlights, their strobes flashing. Shooter stared out the windshield. Holy mother, he gasped. What the hell is that? That, Ricardo replied, is our bullshit story, is stupido. Shooter couldn't believe his eyes. A little boy stood in the middle of the road with an M4 carbine assault rifle, emptying his clip into another boy who danced a bullet-ridden jig on the front lawn of one of the houses. The victim fell lifeless onto the wet grass. An old woman was beating a boy with a broom handle, raging volumes of profanity. Still, another tried to hold on to a smaller kid who squirmed and twisted trying to get away. Teddy, Chris exclaimed. Stay with me. Shooter leapt out of the car. He leveled his pistol, aiming at Jack. Drop the rifle, he ordered. Now. Ricky opened Shooter's passenger door and aimed as McMahon radioed in for backup. Are you crazy, Jack cried, glaring at Shooter. Don't aim at me, moron. Aim at them. Who, Shooter snapped. The kid you just shot to death? 
Put down the gun, little boy, before I blow your head off. The bullet-ridden dead boy on the lawn sat up. Shooter's heart leaped into his throat. Nancy continued to battle in her driveway. The zombie grabbed hold of the broom handle. She wrestled him for it, kicking him and biting his hand. It snapped from the stress. Kevin and Cynthia Mellon ran out of their house with Dougie behind them. Cynthia ordered him back, but he ignored her. The Mellons ran over to Nancy's driveway, but stopped short as the boy on the lawn climbed to his feet. He grinned at them, and then at Shooter and Ricky. Puss leaked from the bullet holes in his chest. He looked down and shook his head. Let him keep his toy, officer, David Leach said, for all the good it will do him or you. Shooter and Ricky slowly adjusted their aim toward him. McMahon screamed. They spun around in time to see him swarmed by four zombies who came out of the woods. Shooter and Ricky ran back. McMahon was fighting as hard as he could, punching the boy repeatedly. Shooter grabbed the first zombie he came to and ripped him off the officer. It was Sam. Shooter gagged at the stinking pus-filled hole in his chest. He saw his heart. It wasn't beating. Sam tried to bite him. Shooter pressed the pistol to Sam's temple and pulled the trigger. A chunk of his skull flew away. Pus and gore blasted out of the side of Sam's head. Sam laughed. Shooter shoved him, the world starting to spin. He grabbed McMahon and Ricky and dragged them back to his car. Cynthia screamed as Nancy plunged the broken end of the broom handle into her opponent's eye. He reached up, grabbed her by the throat, and pulled her down to the tar. He rolled on top of her and yanked the stick out of his head with a loud pop. He raised it into the air. No! Jack screamed, running toward him. David stepped into his path. Jack pulled the trigger on the assault rifle, but it was empty. He threw it away, balling up his fists. Why stop us, Jack? David asked, quickly holding his hand up. Jack? Nancy asked, looking over. Oh my God! Jackie! Get away from her, you bastards! Chris cried. Stay out of this, McKee! Sam hollered. He walked past Shooter and the patrolman. They gagged at his stench, but did nothing to stop him. Yeah, the boy holding Nancy echoed. He sneered at Cynthia. You get back, too. He held the jagged edge of the stick to Nancy's face. I'll kill her. Move. Cynthia backed into her husband. Kevin wrapped his arms around her from behind. He was on the verge of a breakdown. Dougie stood next to Chris, opposite Teddy, his arms locked around his leg. That's right, David nodded. One of his teeth fell out as he spoke. Nobody moves. This is Jack's big moment of truth. Let go of my mother, Jack spat. David shoved him back. Jack snapped David's hand off, trying to flip him. He looked at it dumbly and tossed it aside. It landed by Dougie, who started to screech. <sighs> Chris kicked it away and slapped his hand over Dougie's mouth. Derek was in the back of Shooter's car, trying frantically to get his mother's attention. Cynthia was hysterical and couldn't hear him over the storm. David held up his stump and shook his head. Look what you did, Jack, he sneered. I only wanted to tell you the truth. About what? Jack snapped, circling him, his hands working. The gym bag is on the lawn, if I can get to it. About her, David replied. He gestured at Nancy. About Hiram. She knew, Jack. Did you know that? She knew what the farmer was doing to you and didn't do a thing to stop him. She has to pay. Her, the farmer, and the witch, they're all to blame. Liar, Jack exclaimed. The bag was beneath his feet. Tell him, the dead boy holding Nancy snapped, dragging the jagged end of the broom handle against her cheek. Nancy cried out as the stick tore into her face. Tell him the truth. 
or I'll cut your eyeball out. Leave her alone, Cynthia screamed, diving toward him. Kevin grabbed her and yanked her back. The dead boy spun around with a broken end of the handle. He dove off Nancy and stabbed it into Cynthia's chest. It went through her and into Kevin. Cynthia felt a flash of pain and slowly looked down. Her eyes grew wide with surprise. She felt Kevin go limp. His weight pulled them both over. They hit the ground sideways. Cynthia shuddered and stopped breathing. The melons died staked together on Nancy's front lawn. Oh, my God, Teddy cried. Derek and Dougie screamed, Mom! Nancy rolled away, got to her feet, and ran toward the wide-mouthed officers. Jack grabbed a grenade, pulled the pin, and slammed it into David's pus-filled stomach. He dove for cover, screaming, Die! Only it didn't go off. David pulled it out and dropped it on the ground. He was about to laugh when the officers broke their shock and opened fire. The dead boy scrambled for the woods behind Nancy's house. This isn't over, Dugan, Sam called, his voice echoing all around them. We'll take the witch first. We'll come back for your mother. That's a promise. Go to hell, Jack yelled, grabbing his rifle. Do you hear me? All of you. Nancy looked at her son and started screaming. McMahon gently led her away. Shooter, his hands shaking like crazy, called Chris over. He handed him the keys to the handcuffs and motioned toward his car. Dougie held his leg, wailing. Chris opened the back door and set Matt free. Matt undid the others while Chris tried to calm Dougie. Derek ran straight for his dead parents and threw his arms around them. Why did you stop her? he wailed, slapping his father's corpse. Chris handed Dougie to Ricardo and went to Derek. He reached out for him. Derek jumped into his arms. Chris held him in the rain, his cries louder than the thunder.